Okay, start is the clock on the world saying it's two o'clock. If I can welcome you all to today's Mersey Travel Committee. Um, if I can first ask for apologies for absence. Yes, Chair, sorry. Um, we've had councillors McKinley, Abby, and Rasmus. Good looking around the room. Apart from that, we've got a full house. Second item is, of course, the standard declaration of interest, and that's just for me to remind everyone if at any time, either now or any time during the meeting, then we need to declare, please don't hesitate to do so so we can fulfil our requirements um, with that uh, procedure accordingly. Third item is the minutes of the last uh, meeting. Um, if I can move that those minutes of the meeting held on the 1st of June be approved as a correct record or subject to the correction to minute uh, 7C part 4 to state council Les Rowland as the opposition member appointment to the Beacon Story Board in place of Council John Dodd. Is that agreed? Excellent. I will sign those off accordingly. And the fourth item is a presentation from uh, Matt, which is going to be a catch the bus week update. Matt, over to you.
chief executive for Greener Journeys, and that was a, that was really good to get her up there in what's kind of her busiest uh, week of the year. She was with us for for a few hours, and afterwards, really commented on on the good work that was being done and on on the event itself. Everyone likes something for free, and we had um, freebies and goodie bags to give out uh, provided by the operators. And we also took the opportunity to carry out quite a lot of customer surveys as well, so that we could get some good insight from, uh, from people into what they want from bus services and to feed back into uh, to our work with the operators. In terms of some of the things that went well, I think it could be summed up really in three words, which are engagement, promotion and insight. Those are the things that I really took from, uh, from the event. But I think the fact we jointly hosted it, which I think is I think I'm told is the first time that we um, we learnt the surveys captured views really from both users and non-users. Some of the things that the bus users told us is that they use the bus for a real variety of, uh, of reasons. The main ones being to commute to town. Lots of commuters uh, came through the square. Um, lots of people, particularly from college. Why they, why they don't and why, why they could be 
those things to incentivise uh, those those people potentially to use the bus and, uh, and make the switch were again services running later into the evening, so a, a better evening network. That shorts around public safety, that when you use the bus you, you feel safe. And things like group tickets, particularly for people um, who are maybe going out in the evening, group tickets and group discounts could be that tipping point between the type of to use and type of to use the bus. And also, again, frequency, um, frequency of service, and those, those frequent services can be much more um, attractive to people. So, in terms of that feedback, it's, it's, it's really great back, it's good to talk to customers, it's good to, uh, to get their insight, but it's particularly important that we then kind of convert that into, into proper action. So in terms of some of the things that, um, that we, we do as a result of uh, Catch the Bus Week and the activities around it, the first thing we, we did was to, um, to put out a press release, which, uh, which talked about our activities around Catch the Bus Week particularly focusing on the, the Wi-Fi element, trying to make the press release just a little bit different for, for people. You didn't get probably the pick up that we would have liked in, in the regular press, and that, that is a challenge for, uh, for us, but in particular in, in the trade press, it did get some good, uh, it, it did get some good pick up. We, the survey results have been distributed initially discussed around the, um, the, the operators and ourselves in, within the alliance. There's work ongoing around Wi-Fi, which is that kind of number one thing that people, uh, people are talking about. Actually, uh, Holton Transport are the first of our city region operators to now have a fully 100% uh, free Wi-Fi enabled uh, fleet, and others, uh, others are doing work to, um, to improve, improve the availability on their fleet as well. We've seen recent activity, uh, and it's a good start, and that's how I would describe it, around simplification and in some cases reducing um, operator um, ticket prices, in particular moving to a flat fare. So that will start to, uh, to potentially address some of those affordability issues. And clearly, uh, we've uh, discussed at previous um, committees about in detail about the alliance and some of the, um, some of the plans that we have, and some of the things that we like to see there, and one of those key things is around the multi-operator tickets, again around simplifying for many people, reducing those prices, and about introducing uh, a multi-operator uh, day ticket as well. So those are a couple of uh, a couple of actions there, which we hope will start to address things around affordability. And then um, clearly we've also introduced new cleaning regimes as well on the bus on the buses in service, which is is making a difference for people. So. Those are some of the things that um, that we're now kind of taking forward, if you like, as um, as a result of, of Catch the Bus Week. Hopefully, that gives you a, a good little overview of, um, of what we did. And hopefully, we've got some time for questions. That we need to, to Brilliant. That's excellent. Thanks for that, Max. Well, Jeremy first. Thank you, Chair. Excellent presentation, Matt. I just wanted to take this opportunity to praise uh, those travel officers on the bus operators for Catch the Bus Week event. Thanks for the, um, the kind of words about the work of the team. Um, I think it, it's it's a real it's a real challenge, and we, we find I, I think with bus, but I think just just generally really that those positive news stories are quite hard to get into newspapers. They don't often don't trade on the, uh, the the good things that are happening, um, and that that's a that's a challenge sometimes for. Uh, for us, and, and we need to work hard to make sure that we uh, that we're putting everything out there that we can about the good work that uh, that people are doing and the positive um, the positive stories that that, um, that we've got. We've um, as a as officers, um, we've been working very closely with our communications team on uh, making sure that we're doing better briefings to um, to deliver echo 
a lot more positive, I think, than, uh, than, than we've seen in, in the past. But it is, it is a, real, a real challenge for us, and it's, it, it's finding that hook, really, I think, that's going to get a positive message across and is also going to sell the newspaper or get a click on an article. That's, that's the kind of silver bullet for us. So I've got quite a so in order of those in the case of gone, John then Tony then Les then James. So John first. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for the presentation. Very good. Just like to say thank you very much for the positive mention about all the transport. I begin to feel the love now, and that's very cool. Um, my question is actually followed up from Jeremy, really. I um, just wondering how we can actually be more proactive in terms of the way we present ourselves and organisations and press, and whether it's a number of media outlets that we need to get across to. Actually, the approach that we've taken recently to do those kind of more in-depth briefings to particular newspapers is is absolutely the right the right one, and I think um, that's something that we need to make sure that we can, we continue and make sure that those relationships are, um, are built up and are, and, are, and are as solid as possible. I think we need to explore other ways of getting that message across. So it's, not necessarily always traditional media, newspapers and, and radio. Social media is increasingly uh, increasingly important uh, and we did an awful lot of um, social media activity around Catch the Bus Week which probably got that message out there actually more than, than other uh, media outlets. And then again a slightly kind of different tack to it was getting Capital FM involved which is kind of in Liverpool is a different kind of type of brand which maybe you wouldn't necessarily associate with uh, with bus. And again it just gives that kind of slightly different um, slant to things which might be a hook that um, that we could we could catch people on that wouldn't necessarily be there. So I think it's a, a mixture of making sure that we're doing the right things with traditional media but also exploring different avenues, particularly particularly social I'm very happy to help you do your job better by getting more people on, uh, on bus services. I absolutely agree with that. But also re agree with the comment about drivers as well. And there's a, a couple of elements for me. Firstly, the, the bus driver is the face of the bus industry. They're the person that every bus customer interacts with. So the more engaged they feel about the product and the service that they're providing, the better service that they will provide more security or having a job because that industry is successful um, but the insight is, is crucial as well and it's certainly it's an approach we're taking as we look at things like network reviews is about talking very closely very openly with operators about what's going on out there what they see and I think some operators are maybe better than others at how that then translates through to drivers but the, you spot on the drivers see issues every day, they see what's what's going on. It's a, a prime kind of resource really to be used to, to get information from. I'd say it's probably not as well developed that way of kind of communicating as it, as it could be, but it, it's certainly something that, that we need to see more of, yeah. Thanks, Chair. Can I also <coughs> Great job done. Um, you touched on uh, 
safety. Most most people I would see that we use the buses later in the evening is youngsters. And I don't see many youngsters by the hand for that or you know listening to the radio and that. What we need to do is make sure that we're tapping into the youngsters and the way they get information. And the way they get information <coughs> is these. Uh, so we definitely need and it was nice to hear that you were saying that you were looking to modern new ways of getting that message across. And I think we need to learn how to connect with the youngsters uh, and in the way that they uh, like the information coming across. That's point one. The, the second one is I was really glad to see that you were paying more attention to safety on bushes in the evening. Not only for the driver, but for young, young people. Because that, that is another big issue. And I noticed you had a camera up there, and obviously the buses now do have uh, CCTV on, which is great. But I think that also needs to be got out as a message that that CCTV and that safety is there. Because not quite not often do, do the young public know that, that that is there. So again, it's, it's, it's down to communication. But, you know, great respect, that would be a fabulous job that you do. Thank you. I just stress quickly the point on safety, if that's, uh, if that's okay. So, um, it's, it's something that both the reality and the perception is CCTV is the primary reason for that. I think people, particularly users, do know that it's there and that's driving much better behaviour on buses. I think you're right, it's maybe a challenge about communicating that more widely so that non-users also have that perception that, um, that the bus is a safe place to be, regardless of the day, uh, the time of day that, that you use it. One of the big things that's happened really is a result of safety is the introduction back onto the streets of double deckers and the, one of the reasons why Liverpool and the city region saw so many single deckers being introduced over 10, 10, 15 years ago was because of that antisocial behaviour and now we're seeing because behaviour has improved that much that operators are happy now to put double deckers back in um, and that's, that's, that's making Starting point for it is around kind of legislation and I think the fact that there is no kind of legal requirement for um, on regular buses for uh, for seat belts. It, that's kind of that'll be where the starting point for um, for operators are and they'll be looking at all the things around the kind of cost of uh, doing that and what your protocols are and do you need to wait for everyone to sit down and buckle up before you move away from um, the stop. We're seeing on some of our services, which are more kind of <coughs> pointed to schools, dedicated to schools, and some of those, although there's no, again no requirement around um, seatbelts, some of the, some operators of those services have started to put buses on there with seatbelts. So I think that's actually quite interesting to see if that behaviour kind of starts to change for people, and if that makes a difference, or even if that's something that um, that, that people value. And I think we. Before we make any kind of significant moves on that, it isn't something we've talked about particularly with operators. We need to really gauge what the what perception of it, if the earth seatbelts would be, how that might improve um, safety. And I think that it would almost be more of a big, a wider industry type conversation. So, which I think would be quite probably in the early days of.
I reckon Jeremy got it in the foam hand to take well, it. Back. I can tell you what happened to Jeremy this year. I said, we should give him a big hand, and then all of a sudden we want him to <laughs>
service that we run between uh, Liverpool and Seacombe, that 20 minute service, uh, that in itself, you do, um, you've got a journey to 20 minutes for the return journey, you can take 600 people, and there's only about 50 on at the moment. So there's a lot of capacity to have that messaging and communication going on. So a lot of what's going together, it's not fully finished to come and present, but we are dealing with stakeholders an update and as you build up that picture. So there is a team behind the scenes at Merdron across the small team that's working on that. And just on that, I think it may well be useful <coughs> if we have a, a member's briefing uh, on the kind of contingencies that we're going to put in place in the new year. Obviously, there's still lots of detailed work still going on uh, around it because, one, the work has to happen. Uh, there isn't any practical way of doing it um, in any other way than the way that is, is planned. Um, secondarily, once it's done, uh, it will last us for 60 years, so it is a short term uh, pain for some long term gain. For next time we have to revisit it, it will be our grandchildren doing that. But more fundamentally, whilst that kind of work is going on, we have to have the right contingency plan so people can get around in the best possible way and that we've got the messages right. So once we've got the kind of plan to its most detailed and tested sense, probably later in the autumn, uh, it would be quite useful if we have a, a member's briefing to go through it. And No other uh, questions or comments. Oh, Natalie, sorry. Absolutely take that on board. And I think actually that's one of the ways we could develop this further. This event was a great partnership piece of work between ourselves and the bus operators, but it's still a little bit the bus industry kind of doing its own thing itself. And I think opening that out to, to, to other people, and that might be NHS or it might be the shopping centres or the markets, getting them involved, I think actually could be a good way of, uh, of developing. Um, well, in that case, thanks ever so much for that presentation, Matt. I think that's super and well done on a successful Cats Bus Week, which I'm sure we'll be looking forward to seeing what uh, 2017 uh, Cats the Bus Week might hold. So, we'll give Matt a, a big hand. <laughs> okay, moving on then. Item 5 is quarter for uh, corporate plan performance and financial monitoring report. For the last financial year, which was 2015, 16 is catch your owner who's going to present the one for us.
so jump 